This evening, we've got the latest on the Anniston City School Board's awards presentation, Superintendent Darren Douthat's progress report, the school's systems audit situation, and the latest on the Crawford Clinic contract saga. First, let's take a quick look at the superintendent's progress report from the Alabama Association of School Boards. I will quickly go over the rating scale. Um, this is not an A, B, C, D, or F. Um, I'll remind you that board that a rating of three is the target or better. Uh, no one is a role model in all areas. If you look at a three, it says meets expectations and performance consistently fulfills expectations and may from time to time even exceed expectations. So ideally you would, would love to see a superintendent in threes across the board and then maybe fours and fives in the areas where maybe they excel. So we'll start with the board member results. This first slide um, is a compilation of a categorical averages. The following slides will disaggregate the data. The superintendent works for the board as a whole, not individual members of the board. Thus, the ultimate ratings are the ones shown on this page because these are, this is all five board members' collective opinions. Overall, the board rated the superintendent's performance at a 2.6, which is needs improvement. The scores are generally consistent across the categories, as you see, ranging from a 2.4 to a 2.9. The areas of relative strength were management of pupil personnel services at a 2.9. Pupil personnel services would be things like CMP, transportation, uh, maintenance, etc. And then also a technology management at a 2.9. The areas for potential growth was educational leadership of the schools at a 2.4 and financial management at a 2.4. How about the evaluations? Do you do you feel those were uh, uh, that helpful? Was, that was fair and it uh -huh. was very helpful. Thanks, sir. Uh, the school board was also presented the President's Award from the Association of School Boards. To earn the President's Award, a board must have 60% <clears throat> or more of its members attend at least three AASB conferences and have all its members attend the meet the state mandated requirement for training. This is no easy task. Your leadership, your efforts on behalf of the students in the Anniston Public Schools and on behalf of this, of this community are to be commended. I want you to know that out of 138 public school systems, only 39 received this award. As your District 6 Director, it is truly my pleasure to personally congratulate you, Board. The Anderson School Board is among the 39 boards to receive this honor. Please join me in a round of applause for this In the meantime, the school system's audit process is not complete. The superintendent explains why there's been a delay. I think that, that it's an issue uh, between getting materials and getting the process, which, which involves the district and in it, it involves the, the company. Okay. Um, and so, you know, what does this mean if you keep, if there's a the delay keeps happening, well, what does this mean for the district? There's no additional delay that will happen. Um, I think the auditor, auditors were here today to get the, uh, some final information and as quick as uh, they get it processed, we'll get it uh, approved according to the timeline we shared in the public statement. But you're supposed to have the audit to the city council by when, April, March, uh, April, early in the year? As early as possible actually, but again there was just some, uh, some delays and um, I take full ownership for those delays. According to the school system's CFO, Jimmy Thompson, the audit has been completed on time for the past eight years since he's been with the school system. We call the audit firm known as Carr, Riggs, and Ingram CPAs for a comment. Our call was not returned. Anniston City Manager Jay Johnson recently suggested the school system use the same accounting firm as the city of Anniston going forward. Johnson went on to tell the superintendent the city of Anniston would pay for it. Sounds like a free lunch for the school. The school system could save $25,000 if they accept the offer from the city. That's because you guys the board will consider. Okay, you, you guys I have don't a get to make that decision. The okay. board will make that call. Uh, again, for the last five years, that's what's happened. Uh, I, I respect uh, the auditing firm, and it's just uh, 
this is this is a year that that something happened that shouldn't have happened, and and I regret it, and I take full ownership of it. The Anniston School Board is in a contract with Crawford Clinic. Dr. Crawford leases the facility on Anniston High's campus for a dollar a year. But questions surface from board member Trudy Munford about the validity of the lease agreement. Can I get a second? Second. Questions and our discussions. Uh, I had uh, questions. I did speak to the superintendent today. And I, I, I guess I can say he... he gave a long discussion on the thing that I was concerned about, and I'm still concerned about it, and he knows that. Uh, and that is the backdating of the lease. I just didn't understand why this was backdated to the lease to um, April 2017, when we were doing it for season. And why not today's date? But I mean, he is So he would, he, would be, he would be dated for when he came entry? It's when it's dated yeah, for. Yeah, I know you're talking about that. After speaking with Mr. Brown. Okay, well, I have some concerns about that. Uh, the proposal was submitted in uh, 2016, and I assume that was to the other board. Is that correct? No, ma'am. The proposal, that's we did discuss that. The proposal, the initial proposal was uh, provided to this board at the work session with Dr. Crawford present. Okay, well, I'm going by the date on the proposal. It says, uh, I think it was July something, 2016. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, but, well, we but I, I just simply grabbed the initial proposal, and, and because it, it didn't change, we uh, submitted it to you all. Because he, he sat down and went back through that same proposal with um, Mr. That's Sir. what I'm saying. It was July 27, 2016. The Crawford Clinic submitted a proposal back on July 27th of 2016. The Crawford letterhead shows the former address of the clinic, which was 1900 Layton Avenue. This proposal spelled out plans to include Anniston High students who were pursuing medical-related studies. She's, she's looking, Mr. Bounded, at the, at the proposal. proposal. Yes, ma'am. Um, what it's going to do. Yeah. What it's going to do. Yes, ma'am. That, that, that was shared initially with you all at the work session. The same proposal? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When, when he was present out at the Jacksonville McClellan okay. campus. The date is probably just a mistake. Okay. I don't think it's a mistake. I think that was just what was intended. Um, no, ma'am. No, 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 ma that was the first conversation that was had regarding the matter, was him presenting that proposal at the work session. Okay. I thought that Good work result. session was February of 17. It was. It was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, McClellan. Yes, I remember that. In February of 2017, the superintendent says discussions about the Crawford Clinic were discussed during a work session at McClellan, but there was no voting on the deal. Voting is not part of a work session. Jump forward to April of 2017. A lease agreement apparently generated by the Anniston School Board was introduced. It appears the school board president did not sign the lease agreement, no signature from Crawford, and the document was not notarized. The thing that I was concerned about and I'm still concerned about it, and he knows that. Uh, and that is the backdating of the lease. I just didn't understand why this was backdated to the lease to um, April 2017, when we were doing it for season. And why not today's date? But I mean, he is- So he would, he, would be, he would be dated for when he came entry. It's when it's dated they, for. Yeah, I know you're they gave it to a doctor to run a business for one dollar. And that just troubled me. Why I, I came out, I, I don't believe this. If we need money, why did it, a doctor could, be, could, could pay rent or could have purchased this property? And you already scrapped based on the budget you presented. You don't have any money. You're spending everything you get. This could have been money that you could have used for our school. And when I checked, this doctor still do not have a contract, a signed contract. How can he go into a building, renovate it, get a building permit without a signed contract, and who gave him permission if it's the board haven't voted on it? And if they voted on it, why don't, why can't he produce a, a contract? Somebody explain that to me, and I'll be satisfied. Did the board vote on it? I was told it only came before the board, your last board meeting. But this man had been in the property for months. Renting it out, renovating it. Now, any board member that's part of something that was done 
not publicly, but behind closed doors, you have done something that's illegal. That's what I want to know. You get a response. Okay. A written response. A written response. A written response. The other concern was the uh, substance. We discussed that as well. And it does state that if he should decide to sublease it, it has to come back to the board. It does. Whereas I think we should just say in the document that he should not sublease. Since he's getting <coughs> the billing for a dollar, I don't think that that should even be in the lease at all. No subleasing at all. I think that should have been written out in the term. Yeah. Those are three three concerns on this lease. If, if you if you look at and it's back in the ballpark a little bit here. If you, if you look at where it talks about the subleasing, it says he has to come back to us. And that's a good thing because then we can negotiate any additional cash flows for any subleasing. He can't just put somebody in and start making money. It just, it's, if he says he has to come back to us, he has to come back to us. And we can negotiate at that time. Which is a good thing. I just really feel that he should sublease it all. That should, be, that should have been written in, I, I, in, in the document. You have reiterated, in, uh, Ms. Mumford, some of my concerns as well. I guess I'm confused. I am too. Um, it, it's, it, it's, this is a little bit of a, I mean, let me use the word hiccup, because this is a business um, behavior that should have been taken care of before now. And we all know that. Now, uh, Hasn't there already been subleasing going on? I mean, I hate to ask this question, but I, I, I'm... <laughs> I'm not sure of that arrangement. Is there any way we can table this and go back to the drawing board, uh, Mr. President? We have a motion, a motion on the yeah. floor. We either, so vote the motion. we either vote the motion up or down. Up or down. Oh. You don't go back. It's it's not in the Anderson School Board, uh, at, say the Anderson City Board of Education, and it's only signed by Dr. Crawford. But based on this lease, the Crawford lease never existed because it never had been properly signed or notar uh, notarized. So how can you revise something that has never really existed? I trusted the attorney who advised that this was a legitimate contract, and that's why I submitted it. Yeah, I saw it all. I, I, and I'm not questioning the, the legitimacy of the contract. I'm concerned, and I thought this is where Ms. Munford was going, or one of her points, about the timing. Yes. If, 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 we're, if we're doing this, and we know that the building is already being used, there's been work done and all of this, um, if, if, if we have a, a contract that we approve tonight that says what it says, but that activity has already happened, then where does that leave us? Do you, do you have, uh, I'm not saying it has, I'm saying if it has. <laughs> so I guess right now that's where we are is Dr. Crawford is, is occupying a, uh, a building that I was told he spent several hundred thousand dollars making repairs on that he have not been properly, have not been properly leased or approved by the board. Well, if, 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 they, if they were not an adult, they did not sign this, this lease back in, back in April of 2017. It could have been something they verbally knew about, but I think the proper procedure is before, you, before, doctor, uh, before the superintendent can do something of this nature, it would be brought before the board ahead of time. And then once they approve it, then it would be in order to go do it. But that was not done, it was not done that way. Board President Robert Houston says if the agreement is reworked, it could be a win-win situation for both the students, school system, and the Crawford Clinic. My concern here is that if there's an opportunity, if you look at 14.01 on page 8, it talks specifically about subleasing, and it says what he can't do. And if he does do it, we have to go back and negotiate. I'll ask the question of the board. That we could go back and negotiate and make this a money-making process along with adding the value to our students 
about having a, a, a clinic on site and he's training our students. And that would be What's the thing wrong to do. with that? That would be the thing to do. What's yeah. wrong and that, with that? And that we was missed be the ball. We have to own that. It didn't happen like it did. But it's still an opportunity for our children to get valuable experience. And the money that's been put in in renovating the building has only added to the value. And I, what, 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 what? I certainly don't want to do anything that to put, the programs have already started with our students, yeah. right? No, they, they haven't actually started yet. No. I don't want to put anything like that in jeopardy. But the one thing we need to do, though, is actually validate if any subleasing has already occurred. That, that would be my only question. Well, we can do it, but yeah. we still, yeah. he still has to buy back the lease. That's the script so he here. Has, you know, if it's, this is what he's agreed to, that he can't do it. And can. if he did it, then he had to go back and negotiate yeah. with us about the monies. About the money that he's receiving. Because <coughs> it, it could be a win-win. You guys, just think about this. Just really think about this. It could be a real win. If we can, he's already added over three, I think it's over $300,000 in the upgrade of that building. Okay, part one, if we had, if we had, to, uh, had to do it, We'd have to spend three hundred thousand dollars or so to get it done. But we wouldn't. But, we would have no, we wouldn't have got it done. But 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 it, yes. But but, but anyway. Was, but anyway, he's put that guy, he's put he's put that kind of money into it already. Point one. Right. Yes. Mr. Thompson cannot engage in this because he's on the same board, Mr. Crawford. So he's out of it. He can't engage. So so the question here is again, he's put money into it. We have a proposal on how this is going to help our students. Many other things we've done in the past with leasing that's not help our students overall. This is something that's quantifiable that can help our students. That's point one. The point point two. Point three is is, is the fact that if some leasing has occurred, it violates this agreement. He had to come back and negotiate with us. And if money can be generated, it's a windfall. Our students get it, the building's upgraded, and we get money generated from the sublease. Well, first of all, uh, uh, and I hear what you're saying, and I think that's great, but you know, you don't make all these type of, of uh, uh, contracts and have them cut the trees down. I think they cut trees down. Okay. Concrete we around the building, the and they did all kinds of things, but we are doing the least this evening. Yeah. But your point is well taken. Uh, I don't agree with it, but on the other hand, uh, your point is well taken about the future, he in did, case he should sublease in the future. He did tell us the day that he was with us that they were going to cut trees, because I'm a tree person, and we had a discussion about the trees. That did you uh, get permission for them to cut the trees? No. You have to get a permit from the city to cut trees. Okay. I call for question, please. Hold up and down. Okay. Any additional questions, comments? If there are none, it's time to vote. And the roll call. Miss Brown. Yes. Miss Monfort. No. Miss Houston. Yep, ma'am. Yeah. Did you vote, Miss Houston? He won't vote. This doctor still do not have a contract, a signed contract. How can he go into a building, renovate it, get a building permit without a signed contract, and who gave him permission if it's, the board hasn't voted on it? Ms. Frazier? Yes. Dr. Harrington? Yes. Okay. Three to one. Carey? But the one thing I will say here, again, this must be done where we go back immediately and look at if any subleasing has been done. And if it has been done, we have to go back to the attorneys and immediately start negotiating a cash flow. We got it. The next item is item H. I think this is our final action item, the approval of the revised profit lease. I recommend approval of that lease. Uh, there was a vote on approval of the revived Crawford lease. Mm -hmm. But based on this lease, the Crawford lease never existed because it never had been properly signed or noted, uh, 
notarized. So how can you revise something that has never really existed? Superintendent has made a recommendation of the approval of the revised Crawford lease. Can I get a motion, please? I recommend the approval of the revised Crawford lease. Can I get a second? Motion is down for lack of second. Yep, motion is down for lack of second. Uh, the Crawford uh, agreement, it died because there was a... What That's was right, the, we must go back to the table apparently and um, and uh, figure out what the board wants to see in in, um, in, in, in the lease finally. We did approve the lease already, but this one, this one was revised to uh, consider a couple of other points. I was told that he had approached some of the board members about another lease that he had prepared, subleasing it, this building. He's subleasing it to another doctor that's, that's going to be in there with him. He's subleasing something he do not properly have himself. And so, and, and the board was really concerned about that, that someone else would be coming in and utilizing this building too. Dr. Harrington? Yes. go to this board. When we have issues or when you discover issues with a uh, item, I would in the future like to know when you know. I think part of the problem that we are having is that we're not pulling in the same direction or some of us are pulling one way and the others are not knowing. And I don't think it's fair to me. We called the Crawford Clinic for a comment on the issue. Our call was not returned. We're down to section four, superintendent update. I want to start with a win by the football team last Friday against White Plains. I, I want to salute uh, Coach White and his staff and the young men for that win. It was a necessary win. It puts us in puts us in place for uh, an opportunity to go to the playoffs, which I think will be a big boost for the young men. Uh, the next item I'd, I'd like to uh, speak to is related to the donations that we've received over the last two, three weeks. Uh, just this morning, I had an opportunity to speak with the gentleman, uh, Dr. Marvin Jones, about a donation he wants to make to uh, Cobb Pre-K. And uh, he wanted to tour the facility, look around. Uh, he and the gentleman that, that was with him were very impressed with that facility. Uh, they, they went back in and reminisced about history because they had a lot of connections associated with Cobb High School. So they uh, took a lot of time looking at pictures that were on the wall in Cobb. Also went back and saw the artifacts that are collected there from Cobb. But he, he has a donation he's coming with. I don't know exactly how much that would be, but, but these next people did submit checks already. Uh, Senator Dale Marsh submitted a check for $10,000 and wow. we appreciate him for that. Uh, about a month ago, he called me up and met me at, uh, at the high school. In fact, uh, Todd Jones went out to, to greet him and brought him into the school to, uh, to take a picture of the presentation. He also gave us a donation of $10,000 last year, which we used to uh, support the fire science uh, students. Uh, in, the, in those classes uh, with the fire department. Uh, also, Commissioner Fred Wilson has donated, I think, three to four thousand dollars to uh, band, football, and basketball. Um, since I mentioned fire science, I want to say that uh, I went out to, to check out the fire science students. We have three students, and I think they're three of the best students in that program. Uh, they they were completing an obstacle course out there at the training station that. Um, that would be difficult for almost anyone, uh, especially when you have 150 pounds of equipment on. Uh, but they did a fine job, and the, uh, the reports I got from all of the young men were, was, were that uh, they are uh, going to complete that program, and they're going to have a good future in, in uh, fighting fires. Uh, the final item I have here is to thank everyone for their participation in the community meetings. Uh, I've seen board members <coughs> out at, uh, uh, the, the three meetings that have been held, I've seen other staff and um, 
and parents out at those meetings. We've had meetings at Constantine, Glen Addy, and Norwood Hodges. That meeting was uh, this past Monday. Uh, the next meeting is at Norwood in the FEMA Constructor Building, um, supported by, I mean, I'm sorry, managed by the Boys and Girls Club. So that's where it will be on October 22nd. Mm -hmm. And the final meeting will be October 29th at the City Meeting Center. That concludes my report. If any of you get a chance, if you haven't already done so, take a little time to read The Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. And then once you get a little bit more time, read Man's In Search of Meaning by Victor Franklin. It may give you some insights on some of the things that's going on and how we need to wrap our heads around making change to ourselves first. And how to see world how to see the world look differently. You know, I wasn't gonna say this, but I'm going to say it now. You know, we've been talking about crime and gang violence and all this, right? And we're trying to figure out what's going on. I can tell you right now, it's gonna take a lot more than a meeting. A group of people, a, a group of people talking about what we need to do. We talking about something that culturally has to be dealt with, and it's not one person in this room can do it. When 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 you dealt with cultural isolation and social invisibility, you created a monster. People in search of themselves, identity. When you have one out of four black men that's born the seven times like to go to prison. Think about that. Then you got for for every black man that who who, who graduates from college, one hundred is going to go to prison. In other news, Aniston City officials held a ribbon cutting ceremony at the new Greyhound bus station. Yes, you should. Yeah, took a couple. Okay. There we go. Okay. Oh, I don't want to block you. Are we all set? Okay, on the count of three, we're going to cut the ribbon, then, okay? One, two, three. Yay! Yeah. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, would you like to have a word or two? Well, sure. I'm, uh, we're just thrilled that, that, that uh, Greyhound is back in Anderson. It's always been a great historic partner in this this wonderful historic multimodal building. Uh, Amtrak in Anderson, Greyhound in Anderson, and Glid. Again, just very glad to see y'all back. Welcome home. Thank you so much. And Steve is the. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, this is his territory. Uh, well, Steve I just want to say, uh, uh, all my years with Greyhound, relocating bus stations from city to city, I don't think I've ever experienced a more welcoming environment than this city of Anniston provided for us. And uh, they just treated us like gold uh, and welcomed us with open arms, and we are thrilled to be back back here in Anniston. Right here. Okay. Well, we really appreciate everyone coming out today and helping uh, make this a, a great day. So thank you for welcoming us back to Anniston, right where we belong, and it's great. Thank, thank, you. thank you so thank much. You. Stay tuned for updates on the yeah, Anniston Marcus School System and the City of Anniston. Thanks for watching. J. Carolyn Soul Snacks, where we fix up fresh barbecue nachos, mega clubs, boogies BLTs, Twix brownies, fresh coffee, candy bars, and much more. Try out our banana pudding, peach cobbler, and ask about our daily desserts. And we have Blue Wayne daytime cocktails. Whether you're arriving by Greyhound, Amtrak, or from home, come eat at J. Carolyn's Soul Snacks at the Amtrak station at 126 West 4th Street. And you get free delivery with a $25 purchase within five miles. We're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturdays, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Ask about our catering and soul food services. Call in your orders at 256-225-1562.